Okay, we're back here live at HP Discover 2012. We are back inside theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV, the exclusive, extensive coverage of, of the conference and HP's event here. Uh, we're getting down to the wire, uh, last, uh, last day for us, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Bethany Mayer, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of HP's Networking group, Bethany, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Good to see Thanks you. You know, I hate to say it, but this is really the one we've been looking for. Oh. We've, been, we've been going nonstop all week, and, uh, I know, <laughs> and I you know. are a wrap up segment. We're very excited about having you on. We'll try to bring our energy and our A game, <laughs> but since we've been here three days, but uh, uh, thanks for, for coming on. And, and to do uh, it. so give us the update. You're uh, the GM of the networking division. Mm -hmm. You were also, prior to that, running marketing for mm -hmm. all of ESSN, which is under Dave Donatelli, which is now the Converged Infrastructure Team. Right. Uh, give us the update on what's happening with networking, and we sure. want to get into some of the factoids around software-defined networking, mm -hmm. virtualization, all the advancements that's going to scale up the big data. Yeah, happy to do it. So we made an announcement very recently at Interop, and we also repeated the, the message again at uh, Discover to make sure our customers had heard about it. So we recently um, launched a new technology called Virtual Application Network. And the idea there is to have the ability to um, separate the control of your network from the physical network itself and um, essentially virtualize uh, the network and provide um, programmability in the network using virtual application network. Um, it's a module of our intelligent management center and we have also partnered with F5 which is also integrated into our, um, our van manager, our van node, and that allows you to do three really important things. It allows you to characterize the applications that are running on the network, it allows you to virtualize the network, and it allows you to orchestrate or program that network so that you can deploy applications very, very quickly. So when you, okay, so when you say characterize them, yeah. you, you mean so that you can inject policies and exactly. automate the whole That's process. That's right, yeah. so I mean so different applications require different things of the network as they're running across them. I'll give you a good example, Exchange um, it has a protocol called Mappy, it's very, very chatty, and you have to set up your, your network, your infrastructure, so that you can handle the chattiness, the back and forth of Exchange to make sure you don't bog anything else down. And so what we've done along with F5, which of course is the market leading um, application delivery controller company is to um, basically provide that application characterization um, to in our intelligent management center so that we have the ability to characterize any number of applications, whether it's video, whether it's voice, whether it's um, exchange, whether it's SAP, um, any number of applications, link is another one. Um, so several different applications and that you can basically characterize and then we, ha we provide a template um, that automatically provisions the network appropriately for that application. So in the case of Exchange, you can abstract the chattiness and hide that complexity from the right, user. Right? right, The really valuable thing about this is it allows you to deploy applications very, very quickly. So right now, applications take um, anywhere from weeks to months to provision configure your network for and then deploy. That has a lot to do with the fact that today, unfortunately, the network is very manually managed. The CLI is used very heavily and, and right now, in order to provision a network for a new application, um, it takes you in any, like in a normal data center, it takes you 250,000 CLI entries. So the first, the time for that, that means going box by box, you know, yeah. putting CLI entries into those switches. You know, it would be sad too if you happen to make a mistake, which about one in ten, one in yeah. one thousand entries are a mistake, and then you have to redo it based on the mistake. So, so it just takes you a really long time to provision the network, and it doesn't know what's running on top of it, right? So it isn't characterized for that application. Yeah. yeah. So we talk a lot about the IT labor problem on the mm -hmm. cube, and if you look at it probably about two thirds of the dollars that are getting spent in IT are spent on people. Exactly. And the process around them, and uh, you know, we think IT, you think automation, but right. you know, we've sort of not lived up to that promise. Converged infrastructure is a big step that, at that, yeah. and some of the things you're talking about with you know, <laughs> eliminating the command line interface yeah. woes are a yeah. big step in that direction. I right. mean, I, customers must be um, really pushing you 
to solve that problem because it's constricting innovation, isn't it? It is, I mean, frankly, the network is far behind in terms of innovation. Um, you know, the, the CLI itself has to be more than 25 years old. I mean, it's the creation of DAC, believe it or not, from years and years ago. So we're using today, in 2012, what was created in maybe 1983. I mean, just unbelievable, you know, um, time period for using CLIs. And, and, you know, that has a lot to do with how the network's been developed and, and sort of the lack of competitive um, folks in the networking industry. Um, everybody's standardized on using a CLI, and it's just, it's really manual, it's really error prone, yeah. and it takes a lot of time and people to do that. So the payback for having automation is huge. Mm. You know, it's like, when, when there was innovation, it's always like, it's a ratchet game, this gets better, that gets better, you get the servers are cranking out under your, you guys' group over there, converged infrastructure, storage has got some great solutions, mm -hmm. with flash, memory, everything's happening, yep. and then it's like, come on network guys, what's, mm -hmm. what's going on? And so outside of just the manual, kind of old, dated mm -hmm. techniques, mm -hmm. um, performance is also an issue too, yeah. right? So yes. could you talk about, uh, as the GM, you've got to look over and manage the P&L, mm -hmm. make money, expand mm -hmm. the product line. Granted, you're unique because mm -hmm. you have a, <laughs> a conversion infrastructure team behind you, mm -hmm. not just a pure networking mm -hmm. company. But what's happening in the trend line? Mm -hmm. What is the key things going on that's going to change that? Well, I would say first the um, software-defined networking, which Van is our first um, uh, step into that. I in addition to the fact that we have um, OpenFlow enabled the majority of our products in the portfolio, and my um, commitment is that we'll have OpenFlow enabled the entirety of our switching product line by the end of this year. So that first is very important because, again, back to that automation, we provide something that's very differentiated. And I believe that software-defined networking is going to be a sea change um, event for the network because it's really needed. So obviously there's been a lot of startups out that have come out of that area. Yes. Could you just, and, and, and depending on who you talk, there's a lot of FUD going around, the fear and certainty and doubt around what this is. Um, some are calling it academic. Uh -huh. It is new because it popped out of Stanford and some academic guys uh, mm -hmm. helped with that. You so guys did we, actually we helped, by the way. You guys, so what? So you guys have, just for the record, a shipping product yes. of OpenFlow. That is correct. We have the probably the first commercially shipping product of OpenFlow in, in terms of switches in the market, and we also have an installed base of OpenFlow-enabled networks in the market too. What is the promise of OpenFlow on the software side? Is it? Um, What's the what's the what's the what's going to come out of the OpenFlow? Well, the promise of OpenFlow, OpenFlow is just part of how to create a software-defined network. So the ability to um, automate and program the network without having to, as I said, run from box to box to box, that is a very different instantiation. So for software-defined networking, the big keys are programmability, virtualization, and um, automation. So, so if we can do those three things very well, you know, software-defined network is, uh, is going to really change how networking is done. And we think, I think, uh, as well as um, my team with NHP, believe that um, OpenFlow is a good part of that. It's an open standard, which not everybody likes, um, but we like, that's our, that's our philosophy. It's an open standard. Uh, you can build on that from a controller perspective to create your own products of, you know, with all the different flavors, but it really allows for interoperability, which is important to our customers. They want products to be interoperabil interoperable, and they want want heterogeneity, which we've always talked about with converged infrastructure. HP has had a big emphasis on, you know, the cloud, the, the security and yes. trust in the cloud. Um, how does virtualizing the network, this initiative that you're talking about, change the security model? Mm -hmm. It actually um, helps it a lot because, frankly, you know you have a you have a um, single point of control for your network, so you don't have people changing box configurations, you know, out in some part of the data center or in another campus or whatever that could affect the entirety of the infrastructure and cause it to basically be take your network to be taken down. You can have a, a single control point. That control point can include security as well, so you can. Um, you can authenticate, you can authorize, um, you know, the complete uh, AAA is there for you, and um, you basically have a more secure network because you don't have folks working in different places to change the network um, without your knowledge. And presumably it's e easier to automate updates and management mm -hmm. of patches and things like that. Um, 
Bethany, I wonder if we could uh, change gears a little bit and talk about your business. Um, sure. You uh, took over, what now, about a year, a year ago? ago? Mm -hmm. And so, definitely firmly have your you know hands on the wheel. Um, How's business? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe give us an update. You guys announced the quarter recently. Yeah, yeah. so so we grew this quarter, um, and uh, that was great for us. In fact, that's now the ninth consecutive quarter of growth for HP Networking um, since we acquired 3Com and um, integrated the pro the companies together. Which is like three years ago now, right? Roughly? Actually, 2010. Okay. April 2010 was right. when we close that right. so actually it feel maybe it feels <laughs> like three years <laughs> ago <laughs> but it's really only two years ago <laughs> but in any case old, um, so so we continue grow to see growth in our business which I'm very pleased about um, we can continue to see customer momentum we have some wonderful customers one that's here today I think you talked to him is Jason, Jason. Cohen from oh Omnicom. he was great great on the cube really yeah, he's awesome dynamic and innovative and what he's yeah, doing, yeah tremendous and again you know cus it's customers like that that you know really make me enjoy my job, actually, because it's a pleasure to work with him. Um, so we have strong customer momentum, continued customer momentum, and we have great innovation. I mean, in addition to the um, virtual application network that I talked about, we also just uh, launched more um, higher density, higher performance line cards for the 10500. So now uh, we have a 48 port um, 10 gig line card for the 10500 and we have a four port 40 gig line card as well for the 10500 so lots of density lots of performance and throughput for you know the campus that has heavy video traffic heavy rich media uh, services required and so we continue to innovate which i you know that's why i do my job it's yeah really you lot, the product lines rounding out now dave donatelli talked about it in his keynote and he gave some comparisons with your main competitor. He loves that. And, uh, <laughs> and he admittedly said, you know, this is their, their last generation product, but I'm Very using true. that comparison because that's what you're going to be migrating from. So yeah, he so was at least transparent about that, unlike um, your friends at Oracle, <laughs> who, who never are. So I, was, I respect that, you know. When, uh, yeah. So Bethany, talk about, um, you've been a lot of news lately, uh, LinkedIn and then eHarmony had a hack, had some security breaches. Right. Security's a huge, huge yes. cha challenge. You guys, mm -hmm. um, have leadership there. Talk about what's going on with security and your vision there. Well, so as you know, I mean, we have market leading security products. We have Tipping Point, which is the market leader again, consistently for um, intrusion prevention uh, and intrusion detection. Um, we also have ArcSight, which is a great product that basically allows you to analyze and see everything that's going on in your infrastructure. And um, we, I'm, we are working with our ArcSight team to be more integrated with using our management platform and the ArcSight analytics, integrating that technology together so you can really not only you know, manage your network, deploy switches automatically, but also you know, see what's going on um, and make sure that your network is secured. And then of course Fortify, which is our um, offering to go through code and, uh, and make sure that the code is written securely. So all of those things, you know, really provide a nice layered security portfolio for a customer, right? You make sure the code that you're developing is clean. You make sure that um, the network doesn't have any um, back doors, any problems that might, you know, come in and intrude. And the other pieces, um, you can see everything. You can see if there are um, uh, security breaches or incidents that might uh, you know, lead you to believe someone's trying to hack your network. So I think we have a great offering. We continue to innovate there, and again, continue to build customer momentum. We have a lot of developers, uh, application developers in our network and mm -hmm. uh, in our SiliconANGLE audience. They're not really infrastructure geeks. Uh, what would you say to the folks out there that are watching that, that kind of know some innovations going down there? Uh, they worry about vulnerabilities, because yeah, obviously sure. the apps is where there's a lot of holes in the apps too, but mm. um, where is the hardened point? You guys, from mm -hmm. a security standpoint, uh, how do you guys talk to app developers? You say, hey, take, we're, we're good, take it from here? Because mm -hmm. there's more apps coming onto the marketplace every day that need right. that programmatic QoS and or policy. Right, so, um, so the Fortify product in particular really allows um, companies when they have developers working on applications to be able to test the application code itself to determine whether that code has been written so that no one could perhaps you know get into the code base and that's actually really important for developers as well because they want to make sure they develop clean code um, they also want to make sure that the the network that they're riding over is very secure and honestly um, our IPS product is is um, 
better than anything on the market. And, and we have customers that absolutely are the most demanding customers from a security perspective in terms of their infrastructure that you could imagine. So um, we think that, that from an, a developer perspective, we offer really strong support for them in the code base itself and we offer strong support for them on yeah. the network when they're when they're deploying that application. How far are, are you into the DevOps movement? Obviously DevOps is a big trend right now around network operations kind of merging together. You know, developers and mm -hmm. ops, mm -hmm. um, there's a growing contingent, the cloud market seems to be attracting a lot of developers who want to play with infrastructure and kind of co-develop with that. And Facebook, Netflix, Apple, these guys all have those some DevOps guys. Um, where are you guys at with the products there? Do you guys see that on your radar right now, the DevOps target audience? Well, I think the DevOps are, um, audience is you know, someone we care a lot about, and in particular, our cloud business unit, um, you know, with our, um, the cloud offering, that the public cloud offering that we have, where you can develop code, code on the infrastructure itself if you wish to. We have lots of tools, um, lots of capabilities. Um, that's a playground, basically, for yeah. developers. So, you know, we think we're we're actually extremely competitive for developers and for companies that want their developers to utilize perhaps an infrastructure that's there that they don't have to purchase, that they don't have to support, right? We, they have it, and by the way, it's very secure. So, you know, we, we actually think we're going to really enable the DevOps movement within the in the market. Yeah. Converged infrastructure is a catalyst for DevOps as well, I think. You know, we're yeah. hearing that a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. for those that are really pursuing DevOps. It's mm -hmm. still early days, but. Yeah, 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 I would agree. Converged infrastructure, uh, again, I, I mean, it's funny because a lot of people have now, um, let's see, what they say imitation is the best form of flattery. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people have come out with their own converged infrastructure um, following what we've done. And I have to say, even so, we have the best offering on the market. It is best of breed in all of the product offerings in, from what I can see in our market share position and in our quadrant leadership, as well as we have the cloud business unit that's created a wonderful offering that is based on the converged infrastructure. So really utilizes all the, you know, all the really strong app, uh, features that the converged infrastructure brings. I think those proof points are really important because you, you personally, you and Dave Donatelli did a great job of, you know, crafting that strategy and marketing it and getting out to the market, but. That's one thing to market the concept. And that's right, another, another thing, thing to, to actually, actually have products. To deliver on it. Do so that, yeah, So, it's so congratulations cool. on that, that's good. <laughs> congratulations you. on all your Very success. Uh, my final question, because we're getting ready to wrap up here for the end of HP Discover. Um, what's next this year for you? What's on your agenda going forward? Obviously, probably the normal, you know, sure. keep, keep the ship going in the right direction, but right. what's on your uh, agenda for sure. the year? Well, in terms of technology, some really key areas, of course, is um, software-defined networking. That's very important to us, and we're going to continue to innovate there, no question. Um, the other area is wireless, and we have a really strong differentiated offering. Obviously, BYOD is a big movement going on, and we have an offering that is a wired wireless integration product set that means that you don't have to manage your wired and wireless infrastructure separately, which by the way, all of our competitors, you must do that. So, and we offer security, so when you bring any device, doesn't matter what it is, into the network, we can assure that it's, uh, you know, the, the kind of device it is, who's using it, and where they're going on the network. We can, we can have access control there. And we also characterize the network for those devices, so we know we can do, um, device management with our partnership with F5. So wireless is going to be really important to us, continues to be important to us. And then um, last but not least, I would say our performance, our continued growth and performance in the data center. We've got some great products that we're going to be rolling out with this year. Our 5900 last year has been very successful for us and you'll see more from us there this year. Some really great stuff. We're seeing meat in the bone, John, across the entire, <laughs> what, what used to be ESSN and now yeah. is e, the EN group. This is a trademark of, I've known Dave Donatelli, here's a trademark of a Donatelli-run organization. Identify the stuff that customers need, laser focus on getting yes. them out, put differentiation, put meat on the bone, put pressure on the competition, yeah. and you know, drive hard. So it's fun it's, to watch. We've been following great. you guys for years now. It's been great to watch the success and, and the real differentiation, have that converged infrastructure, kind of a unique, 
uh, package yes. uh, and totally differentiated and it's great value. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. The mayor uh, with the HP, GM of the networking group uh, and don't forget storage and servers all kind of on the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing uh, your perspective and uh, updates. You're welcome, thanks okay, again, Okay, uh, that's uh, it, we'll be right back for a wrap up for here for uh, HP Discover right after this break. <laughs>